You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Black Box After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Black Box After Show. Welcome to After Buzz TV. I'm Mindy Thomas, and thank you for joining us here for another episode of the After Show of Black Box. And with us tonight is Jade Howard. Hello, everybody. And not with us tonight is Teresa Law. She is away, so we give her our best. But we are going to break it down, have some fun, so stay with us. We've got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. So much happened in this episode. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No, it's one of the good things I like, though, about this episode is that it really kept the pace from the first. So I wasn't disappointed. It was like the same momentum and the same things to anticipate. Okay. So I liked that a lot. Very good. Now, may I ask, before we jump into all of it, <laughs> I want to know, did you have any guacamole this week? No, I did not have any guacamole this week, which is shocking. Maybe next. Okay. Maybe next. And how was the pace of your week? We're kind of in spring right now. We and... are in spring. It's May. It's Shocking. Mayday, I can't, Mayday. Mayday. It's Mayday. Mayday, mayday everybody. <laughs> mayday. It's May, and I can't believe it's gone by so fast. It's it's already May. All right, Jade, and to get <laughs> to know you a little more, I would like to ask you one of your favorite Hollywood moments. Uh, do you have an experience? A or... favorite Hollywood moment that yes. I can talk about that I yes. didn't yes. sign a contract to Just say out, that. Of the, out of the black box. Out, out of, of the, the black, black box. box. We learned that the doctors call that the brain they on the do. last episode. So, yes. From your black box. I would say probably one of my Hollywood moments is my mom's a publicist. So I grew up a lot on the sets. So like going with her to set. So one of her shows was Growing Pains. How totally exciting. I and you know. remember being on set? Yeah, I was like four or five. I would go to the sets and I would play with the kids that were that played that were the actors there. So fun. In Do you remember filming. Kirk Cameron? Of course. Yeah, I remember Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my. I yes. did meet him in his younger days. So yeah, so that's my Hollywood moment. What yeah, about you? What's that's, yours? That's really huge. I would have to say, just off the cuff, uh, one of the coolest is when I was playing golf while I was hitting some balls on the driving range. Mm -hmm. And I look up, and I thought it was a buddy of mine. So I'm like, hey, what's up? And <laughs> it was Will Smith. Are you serious? And he is sitting there watching me hit golf balls. And I'm like, hey, you are the legend of Bag of Vance. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. Well... Let's just say that we, we visited a little bit and he watched me hit some more golf balls and it was a, a really fun experience. That's an awesome Hollywood moment. You hit the golf course with Will Smith. Well, we were at least at the driving hey, range. Hey, if anyone asks, you hit the golf course Next with Will Smith. Next week, it'll be nine, nine <laughs> holes and then the week after that, 18, and I drained a 50-foot butt. Okay, so. You've got to teach me a little bit about golf. Maybe not. In the, during this episode, our recap of Black Box, but you got to teach me a little bit. Show me, teach me some of that lingo. Absolutely. Now let's get into it. Okay. Yes. First up, I want to talk about the patient, the brain syndrome mm -hmm. that uh, sort of opened the show. We've got yes. the babysitter taking care of the child mm -hmm. in the grocery basket, yes. and she's having a hard time managing the situation. Right. There's some unsafe situations from the get-go there. And even the store clerk was kind of getting involved. And so then there's sort of the explosion of the brain. Right. So the character you're referring to is Carrie Whalen, and she's played by Adrian Warren. And she's the nanny. And she's watching the young boy. And he's just, he was bad anyways, though. No, like he just, 
was not cooperating at all. I don't know, like what her, his parents <laughs> needs a little bit more discipline. I felt like he was just running a, a ruck a muck it was hard around to see, the grocery store is it the child that's going to have a case here <laughs> right it, it, that's what made me wonder okay there has to be something wrong with this kid because he just does not know how to act in a public place right. and the babysitter is just stressing out and he like threw her phone across the grocery store and then she's going to look for him and she can't find him and she goes into a like complete panic mode right and that's when it enters her you see that she is actually going to be the patient and it's not the little kid and her brain what it's called exploding brain syndrome which is an actual actually exists that was a unique case study the entire thing mm -hmm. i personally did not find it my favorite uh, mm -hmm. it was a bit disturbing how that was portrayed however I totally am into the entire episode. How did you feel about uh, I mean, that? I think, oh, well, what happens is that her brain explodes and it, it's just, you just see her holding her head. But if you just saw her holding her head, I don't think you would really get the idea or understanding of what it felt like for her to feel like her brain was literally exploding. So they literally show her brain exploding and they show like the chunks of, brain i would guess brain matter you can say yeah that was all pretty across the grocery store graphic and, but yet it was impactful you can't deny that you did i mean you reacted from it you felt some type of way so i think i they felt were, traumatized I by know, watching that so i think they were very successful in making sure that you felt what the character was feeling and that it was something serious they did have to depict what's going on on the inside mm -hmm. and the team of neuroscientists worked together to find out exactly what was happening with this girl, Carrie. And at first, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to, to find out, well, if she is, uh, if she's in a sort of a drug-induced state. Right, if she was using cocaine. Yes. That was Dr. Bickman played by Ditch Davey. That was his theory was that she, even though her, toxi her toxicity reports showed that there was no remnants of her using cocaine, but her, she was having small seizures or many short, many strokes, and that was something that would be indicative, indicative of that she was using cocaine. Right, and then that sort of unfolds a little bit more throughout, mm -hmm. and you know, it's uh, it's it's an interesting storyline because a young person, and it sort of looks like well, uh, that the, that they might be sort of experimenting with drugs, cocaine. Um, and then that's kind of the first and the last of mm -hmm. that, um, it, you know, an addiction. But what's interesting about mental health to me is oftentimes the alcohol or the drugs will mask the pain that's really happening. And so that was a very unique uh, way that they sort of uncovered this because she stays with the surgeons overnight and uh, and then sort of bolts in the middle of the night after she doesn't want to wait it out, right? Right. Well, I think what ha what happened was she did not want to. She had an episode. She had an episode when they were testing her, and she was getting a brain scan, and she overheard the conversation that they were having doing the scan, and it freaked her out. And she calls for Doctor Black. She gets out of the MRI carriage or whatever it is that keeps you encased in it. And she gets out of there and she has another one of her episodes. Right. And then they show her when she's in the room resting, she got up and moved to another place, which was pretty strange. She was in the bed and then she moves to like a couch chair. And then she's there and the nurse says, go back to bed, go back to bed. And then you realize too, when she has another one of her episodes, and once again, you have to see all the brains flying everywhere and... <laughs> It's like no, not again, <laughs> not another, yeah. not another episode of this. But it kept it happened a couple times, I think, and I think that it really allows you to see, you know, even though you don't want to see the brains flying, you still think, well, okay, it has to happen because this is oh. the only way I'm going to understand that she's really having her moment. Right. Yeah. Well, now I am curious. Would do you hmm, do you feel that? Uh, that that mm, let's say that you want to do you want to talk about that from A to Z or would you like to kind of break it down because that's not really one of my favorite storylines. That's the not night. your favorite storyline. Okay, we can go to another storyline. Um, so, Esme. Yeah. Well, and that's a good storyline. Yeah. Her Dr. Black and Esme's relationship. 
So what happens is that she calls Dr. Black because she wants to tell her some great news and she ignores the phone call. Instead, she calls her brother and, and she says, okay, what's going on? Esme's calling me, is everything okay? And her brother, Joshua Black, played by David Chisholm, says that she got great news that she is eligible to get a scholarship for her performance. She plays the piano. And if all goes well, then she no longer has to pay for her private school education, which was interesting because now you also, which also kind of unfolds in that whole storyline of her being, of Dr. Black, played by Kelly Riley, being Esme's mother, because that, what you really thought was that that was her niece in the first episode. Yes. And then you find out that that's actually her daughter and you see that she is financially supporting Esme's education yes. and maybe what else is she supporting her brother with and helping him raise her daughter for her. Right. And then Kelly Riley, uh, Dr. Catherine Black, is the character and she is uh, the sister uh, in this situation. The brother's actually the the father for the, he's right. the father that Esme thinks that that's her father right where in actuality that's her uncle so he calls with some fantastic news oh there's going to be an audition and a and a piano uh, recital uh, recital um I think she was auditioning is that correct yeah she was trying to see if she would if she had to audition if she got in and because she's so talented, right. then she would get a scholarship. That's it. And yet, a full ride. Catherine would not be allowed to attend that because of her erratic behavior and just... It's not. I wouldn't say it was because of her erratic behavior. It was because of her episode that she had, the previous episode. It was when she had her... She had another episode, and it involved her. It, that was last episode in Kiss right. the Sky, and she it, that which was such an intense okay, scene, anyways. Now. But I felt that that was erratic. But we can we can agree to disagree. <laughs> we we will have to agree to disagree. <laughs> all right, so it's it's fun to look at uh, where all of this is headed because, uh, you know, I, I'm just look. I, I'm just gonna be honest here. I'm ready to talk about Will. Okay, can we just can we just get real? <laughs> you you want to have to reel me in. <laughs> You know, I have no problem talking about Will, who's played by David Ajala. Right. He plays the off-again, on-again fiancé, we can say. Yeah, and, and also at the show open, he's mm -hmm. talking about how he really loves her and he wants to be there for her. And then she starts feeling really bad that she has created this relationship into something. There's a dynamic that, that she's just not comfortable with. That's not the way she wanted to roll in this relationship. Exactly. I think what happened is that once he experienced her when she's not on her meds, he is now having to find his balance in knowing when it's okay to act. He Now he has to adjust how he, he acts around her. And I think what happened was that she said, no, I want you to be affectionate and loving towards me. I don't want you to think that I'm that person that when I had that episode. And so he's thinking, well, that's the person I thought I liked that. Remember from the first yes. episode, he said he liked it. So he wanted to keep that going. And she said, no, 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 no. When I'm on my medicine, when I meet, when I'm not having my moments, I want you to be loving, caring and affectionate. And I think for him, it's finding that balance. Yes, it is. Yeah, she uh, totally um, is is wanting this relationship. Uh, they did also talk about marriage again, mm -hmm. and uh, the relationship is continuing to progress. But then also Dr. Bigman made his way into her office again and tried to kind of do another uh, rendezvous. He did. She, he it, also tried to relive the same, same moments, and she wasn't having that either. Yeah, she, at all. She, she, she wasn't <laughs> she gonna said, go no. for it. She said absolutely not, and he was just. I think it really hit his ego. Yes, you know, really hit that man's ego because he se seems like a guy that does not hear the word no a lot from the ladies. Yes, because then we see him or later ever. <laughs> walking out, and he's got all these female nurses with right, him, like an entourage. His, yeah. his, his posse. <laughs> it was like his posse of hot nurses right behind him, laughing at everything he's saying. And he had also made the comment about Dr. Uh, Catherine Black. He said that she doesn't look like mother material, something of that nature. Right, but then he had the audacity afterwards to ask her out for drinks. So. Right. 
it was just in that whole dynamic. It, it will be interesting to see how that will definitely play out. Yes, and mm -hmm. one of one of the things between them that I really loved seeing was how they analyzed uh, the the one patient together at the end. The one that we thought just had the cocaine. Well, just uh, the cocaine addiction was revealed. Just a cocaine problem. No worries over here. She's not sick after all. No, she was still sick. It was narcolepsy, which was causing her to then have those episodes. And the cocaine was just the ice. It was just the cherry on top of the cake. So she was, in fact, sick. And mm -hmm. that was uh, an interesting uh, portrayal of how they analyzed um, what was really going on and, and, and uncovered it. And then they worked together you know, complimentary because they're both these strong personalities and they're looking at this case and they both really truly want the best for the patient, but they go about it in their own ways and they butt heads sometimes. Oh, I think they, <laughs> they always butt heads a lot. They just have such differing views, I think, on how they want to approach their patients. But a neurologist and a neurosurgeon, they have to work together and they have to she gives the diagnosis he does he performs the actual surgery if it's needed and you just see how it's really imperative that they do work together as a team but their personalities are so different it truly is and now, their egos are very different and a neuroscientist i'm just going to share some scientific facts exactly <laughs> ding ding Ding, ding, ding. This Scientific is our fact time. Right. A neuroscientist <laughs> looks for ways to prevent neurological problems such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, and they spend time studying both molecular samples and human psychiatric behavior. So that's just kind of a little rundown. Uh, she is obviously not the surgeon. She is the uh, one analyzing yeah. the psych psychiatric behavior. Exactly. And yes. then he's the surgeon. Exactly. So that's really neat and complimentary how they work together very complimentary how they're supposed to work together but then very intriguing how they're unable to work together and my other factoid is the compensation i had to find out well, how much these dudes get paid yeah, how much do they and get women, paid and women <laughs> well uh you know a neuroscientist can get paid anywhere from sixty thousand to one hundred sixty thousand or more okay depending on how many years you've been at it and what your expertise level is and she seems to be probably, I'm sure she's at the 160 plus range because she's an author, right? She has a book well, and she's very well respected in her field. So I'm sure Dr. Catherine Black is making closer to the six figure. I like to think she's making the big bucks. I want to say, know? She, yeah, I want to say so too. And say, she is paying that for as private well. school for she ESME. She is ESME's private school. So <laughs> she should be in the six figures. And maybe some piano lessons in there. And she's got great clothes. True. She has that beautiful done, dress she wore. Exactly, that yeah. dress. And then her the suit she had on it was like the white in front and the black in back. It was a gorgeous blouse. Yes, I'm enjoying uh, watching these characters interact, um, these new case studies. And tonight, I just have more of a somber feel. I think it's just, just some of the, like... Uh, drama of this this head explosion thing. I'm trying to um, wrap your of, brain around literally yeah, or figuratively. It, it just it's <laughs> kind of a lot for me to take in. Um, you know, it was it was just very impactful. So right. Well, speaking of impactful, there was also the surgeon who they had a staff meeting, and in the staff meeting, the their boss or their supervisor, we can say, he announced, he brings everybody in to let them know that there is a surgeon that performed a surgery and he had, an, he had a seizure because right. he had a brain tumor and it caused him to, because he was in the, like, in the middle of the most important part of his surgery, it's like the laser was supposed to only go maybe this much, this much into the brain, and instead oh it went this much and killed mm. the patient. Yeah, we're talking and, a totally delicate operation, and you've got to have all your wits about you. And, and the moral of the story was you have to be honest if you're battling something that can jeopardize your ability to use proper sound judgment to well, execute your job because lives are in your hands, which brings us back to Dr. Black's secret of Right. Is she, is, well, here's what happened after the doctor did that. He put the patient at risk and then the patient ends up dying. Mm -hmm. So then all the doctors are called into an emergency sort of right. board meeting and they're called out and told, look, if you have any kind of secret 
then you must come open with this. You must bring it out on the table and we need to deal with this. And uh, she just sat there quiet in the corner, just leaning back like, um, not, not, not it, not, right. not today. And just prior to that, she was having the medical marijuana mm -hmm. and Dr. Bickman had found that. And mm -hmm. he even confronted her in regard to the cocaine case as well. He said people have been known to lie about the drug use from time to time. And I thought that was a powerful line in there. Mm -hmm. um, so not only can they lie about the drug use, but then they can lie about their own mm -hmm. medical state, which is, yeah, what right. she's doing. And even what she said, what uh, Dr. Black said, was she stood behind this doctor because he was like a mentor to her. Uh, Dr. Reynard, played by Edward Herman. And she defended him and said, oh, if he knew he had a tumor, he would he would have said something. He wouldn't have done the surgery. And they said, no, it turns out that he did, in fact, know. And that's why this is an issue or even more of an issue because he kept it from from them. And then the doctor, he uh, wants to meet with Dr. Black. When, she, when he does, he says, hey, look, I want Bickman to kind of do a tweak on me when you guys are, op when he's operating. Because he wanted to die. And he <laughs> says, yeah, he says, I just don't want to go on this type of attitude. And um, he wants the doctor to, to, to do him in. Right. And it's interesting because it's such an ethical no-no for anybody in the medical field to botch your surgery so you can die. And she... I love the approach that she took. No, you're mm -hmm. going to fight this. You're going to be a warrior. You're going to get through this. And his fear was, well, my son, I'm estranged from him. He won't talk to me. I don't have anybody. This is something that's going to literally deteriorate in a year. And then I'll, and I'll be miserable. For what? Why can't I just end now? Especially being someone that performs surgery on the brain and then he has a brain tumor. He knows everything that entails with having a... Uh, that it's having a brain tumor. And he revealed something about himself that he has only been a doctor, that he wasn't there for his son. Mm -hmm. All of these regrets are piling up on him. He doesn't want to go on. His son hasn't taken his call for three years. And so she just doesn't pay attention to all the hoopla. She's able to kind of go in with her intuitive nature mm -hmm. and her education, yes. both coupled together. And then she finds out, okay, in fact, it is exactly that. Uh, but she doesn't know uh, on what level he's really he's really getting at. So she's off somewhere, and then all of a sudden it hits her. <gasps> My mother would say she doesn't want to go on. She doesn't want to live. And then so all of all of this, um, she she knows it, she knows what's going on. And so then she rushes back to the hospital room where he's already taken the pills. But then she's able to save his life because. She, she has such a love for her patients that supersedes mm -hmm. just giving them, you know, good advice or helping them get a s operation. And so she really does care. Right, because that also, like, brings us back then to the beginning of the episode when her and Will are talking and he asks her for the truth. And, you know, saying, she says, well, I do get hypersexual when I have my episodes. And he says, have you cheated on me? And she says, no. But I do get hypersexual, but, yes. no, but no, I haven't cheated on you, which was a lie. Yes. And that's when she's at her psychiatrist's office, played by uh, Vanessa Redgrave. Yes. Dr. Save me here. Dr. Hartman. Hartramp. Hartramp. Dr. Hartramp, played by Vanessa Redgrave. And she's talking to her about, well, I lied to him. And she says, well, maybe you need to tell him the truth. Maybe it's time to practice honesty since you, you're not able to with your daughter ask me so why don't you make up for it with him use this relationship to make up for these lost connections that you have and so it was interesting when you like you said when she's having this flashback she's relating her fixing things i think that's why she thought of, she had the flashback of her mother and of um, the surgeon who she's friends with and that's what made her want to go save him because she couldn't save her mother now she can save him which almost shows him as like a parental figure to her someone that she looks up to so it was almost she was able to to save someone yeah i think when she was talking about her mother she was remembering she's dazzling she was moral she was loving and compassionate but then she said she was also 
this other sort of mommy dearest. Do you remember that movie? Yes, I do. And I, <laughs> no I, wire hanger. Totally. In that flashback, I was like, this is mommy dearest right here. It was. It did feel like that, but it wasn't really her mother. It wasn't her. It was the sickness taking over her It was the sickness taking over her mother. And I think that's why she wanted to save the doctor because he was going to overdose on some pills. Take a, he wanted to, he tried to commit suicide. And I think that's where it kicked in saying, okay, this is not him. Just if someone enters a state of an episode from it's, being bipolar or having an episode or feeling suicidal, that's not that person. And that's what, she knew that wasn't her mother, so she knew that wasn't really him. So that's why she had to go save him. And she made it by what, a minute? Right. She she knows. She knows because she lived through this as a child and you cannot teach in textbooks what experience can teach you in mm -hmm. life. And so this is playing out. And I just I love the way that she ran to his bedside and, and saved his life. And then she gets on the phone with his son uh, who she tries to plead with him and he has nothing but anger and that's after he had already hung up on his dad. Uh, so there's a theme of, of how precious life is and how short that it can be. And, and your relationships with people. Right. You how important to, it is to really appreciate people when they're around, not after the fact, not, when, not because you're going through something bad. Have your relationships good and solid in the present so when something does come up you don't have to worry stress about how am I going to get this person and back in my life or what do I need to do to fix it because I might have a year left and that anger needs to be set aside yes and you know there needs to be the, the bonding and sometimes that has to happen through a third party like a doctor someone that's more in authority position but unfortunately this was a tr traumatic thing and, and it was very highly you know emotional mm -hmm. to to watch some of some of that of course uh, now, the psychiatrist, when I want to go back to that because uh, Vanessa Redgrave is just so powerful. And when she says there's no greater gift than a happy childhood, and I, I just, that totally resonated because mm -hmm. um, here Catherine's having to reflect on her childhood. And yet you can also see how there can be good come out of. Uh, this this trauma that she experienced um, throughout her life uh, so so it's kind of fascinating it's like okay is this a blessing or a curse or maybe it's both right I think it's more of a blessing I think she's really able to give her daughter the life that she didn't feel like she would be able to do and it was a very selfless act and I think she doesn't give herself enough credit for that and how lucky she is to have a brother who has a wife that's willing to take her niece in, her daughter in and raise her as if that is her child, their child. Right. She is participatory in mm -hmm. the daughter's life, but yet at the same time, the reality of her not um, getting to engage in that mother-daughter relationship, there seems to be a lot of grief there. Oh, there definitely, there definitely is. So... <laughs> Can Catherine be honest with Will? I have to go back to Will because to we kind of left I him know. hanging out there. And the poor guy, I mean, you know, he's been lied to. He's been lied to. And then, lo and behold, she does come around. And she, Catherine shows that, okay, she is willing to be honest. Mm -hmm. But it's such a, such a... He leaves her again because she comes clean. Right. She came clean. She let Will know, oh. I cheated on you, and you know, at, when I was in Seattle. Right. And he revealed something about himself. He about did. how he has this yes. father wound. He has... And it's he has, massive. He has daddy issues. That's Will right. Will has a little bit of daddy issues as, because his father was an alcoholic and his father would make him empty promises. So and he died in a car yeah, crash. Yeah, his father died in a car so crash. So that's just a lot. That's that's heavy duty. And so then he's having to hear this this uh, thing that sounds similar to what he dealt with. Or why do you think he runs off? I want to hear your I, take I on that. I think that he has uh, he has his own issues that he's not in tune with yet either. So I think it it lets you know that he's not perfect. It shows that he also has his imperfections, just like Dr. Black does. We all have issues. You know, everybody's got something going on with them. And it shows that. And right. so it brings this, it doesn't put him as much of like on a high of a pedestal, I think, as we saw him in the first episode, where we were just team Will, poor, poor Will. You realize, you know what? Will has some, some issues of his own, which now we know where they're coming from. It's with his father. Yes. So he has some, some brokenness and... 
he just took off running. So there she is again. And she's like, by I herself, what is it with him just leaving her? The last episode, he drove off. He left her. <laughs> he just leaves her. Yeah, this is uh, this is a serious. Uh, he just, that's his that's his that's what he does when things don't go his way. Will will leaves. And what does she do, though? Every time she's vulnerable, then he takes off. She's, so she made herself very open and transparent. OK, yes. She says, I had an affair in San Francisco. But he, she lied to him because he asked her. He that's gave her in the opening scene. That's what ticked him off was that he gave her the opportunity to right. come clean and not hold it against her. And it's almost as if he sees her as like his father because he's getting these empty promises and it just brings back those right. bad memories for him as a child just like you see the flashbacks from her childhood with her mother so he's experiencing they don't show his flashbacks but you see him having a flashback you, by his emotion he's a great actor so i love that he's able to deliver that and let you feel what he's feeling as if there's something else going on with him and i think that's what ticked him off it wasn't he told her he told her in the beginning he said i can i can't handle lies and then when they're at the park and they're going for their walk he goes more into deeper detail about why he can't handle the lies right so uh that's there's a lot there there's a lot to that um the psychiatrist you know she said now why is it that you can be completely honest with me but you're not willing to go there with Will. Then she right. does, and then he runs off. And that's totally, I mean, that's that's devastating I mean, wouldn't news. you, if you asked someone for the truth, and then they told you a lie, and you thought they were telling you the truth, and then they come clean, what, two days later? Oh, I lied to you. Yeah, there's some heart shattering going on there. Right definitely there definitely is. So that's a lot to that. So uh, where where are they going to go? Where are they going to go with this relationship? Like, a, is it prediction time? I think it is. I think we've got some predictions. I'm feeling. I'm, I'm feeling the prediction. For the prediction. Ah. You're after Buzz TV. Predictions. All right, tell me all about Will. What do you think's going on? I think once a cheater, always a cheater. And I think sometimes when people deal with that in their relationships, somebody gets them back, and then they just both become cheaters. Okay. So I think he's going to get her back, and I think it's going to hurt her. So you're saying this is a vicious cycle. It's creating a dynamic within oh, the context it's of the relationship. Such a, it's, it's really going to show how toxic their relationship is. Oh, okay. That's what I think. Well, maybe, I think we're going to see. Aren't they it, doing the best they can do, though? Are they? Mm. I mean, they both have problems. They both have issues that they're not really in control of. I'm going to look forward to hearing what uh, the psychiatrist says because I'd like to hear her take on if this is if this can become healthy. Uh, that's that's really huge. I mean, these are these are massive episodes. And again, we haven't really talked about the bipolar as much, but um, it wasn't as evident this time. I think we just know that she has it. I think the first episode really had to show you how bad it can get for her. Right. And so this time they scaled it back a little bit. And so it wasn't as much of the, you know, I mean, the first episode, it was just each and every time, like you blinked and then she had another episode and you're thinking, is this ever going to end? What about you? What are, you, what are your predictions? Yeah, I, I really feel that... Um... That, that she and, and Bigman are not done yet, that's for sure. And uh, What do you think is going to happen? Well, I just think that, that they, they've got some strengths there going on. I do think something's going to unfold at work. It's just a matter of when. What do you mean unfold? Uh, in terms of... Well, she's got the mar medical marijuana in her hand when he walks Oh, I know. Well, she wanted that office. from the doctor because she said, maybe if I have... If I get my hands on some marijuana, maybe that's what I need. Yeah, the truth <laughs> is that the psychiatrist, that she does not have a prescription at this she time. She said at this time you need to work on your eating your, right, uh, sleeping, balance in your lifestyle, exercise. exercise, all the things that. Your well-being, your mental well-being is more than just taking medicine. And yes. I love that she brought that point into that too. Extremely powerful, extremely powerful. Well, well, I think that pretty much does it for tonight. And Thank you all so much for listening and watching. If you're on watching us on YouTube, be sure to go to iTunes.com and search for Black Box after excuse me, after Buzz TV Black Box so you can give us five stars and comments and let us know what you think. If you have anything you want us to talk about next time or anything you think we missed, let us know. 
Thanks a lot for joining us here on After Buzz TV. Yes. I'm Mindy Thomas, Jade Howard. Have a great night. Buzz you later. Where can we find you guys on Twitter? Oh, if you want to find me on Twitter, you can find me at uh, Real Jade's World. And I'm at Mindy Charlotte. So we'll look forward to your tweets. Thanks a lot. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.